So here's the graph of j of x. Sketch the image after a translation of four units left and five units down. So if I do that, I would take, it looks like these are key points on my graph. I'm going to take those key points. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four to the left, one, two, three, four, five down, one, two, three, four to the left, and five down, and one, two, three, four to the left. I'll get where those three points end up going after going four to the left and five down, and then I'll draw Again, I'll put arrowheads on the end. Your textbook, if it hits the end of the graph, means that it continues. So even though the textbook didn't put arrowheads on, you are expected to put arrowheads on the end of that graph to show that it continues. So I reread my question, because I just actually, I didn't even read the whole question. I got so excited about the first sentence that I wanted to do the question that I just started doing the question without reading the rest. I need to write the equation and again, we have this language here in terms of the function j. So that means I need to write j of x on the right-hand side. Now, we're moving left and right and moving up and down. Left and right happens inside the function, up and down outside. So inside j, I'm going to be, as a liar, moving 4 to the left will be plus 4. And then outside of the function, going down, I'll have minus 5. So anything that's inside the function is where the x was originally. The x is inside j of x, so everything inside the function j will move it left, right. And anything outside will move it up and down. And in question 1, I interpreted each function as doing the domain of A and the domain of B. In this one, when I read this carefully, I'm like, if it says each function, I've got only had to do one, I guess I have to do the original one as well. So my domain for my blue one, okay, oops, it's not blue anymore. is everything. Again, I can write it this way, or I can go negative infinity to infinity. Maybe I'll just write that down. At the beginning, I'll, I'll probably do both for a while, and then I'll try to alternate between notations, so we keep practicing both. The range, now the range of my blue one has a smallest value at minus 5, so we would write this as y is bigger than or equal to minus 5. In interval notation, we had a square bracket. And we always use a round bracket with infinity. So we go from negative 5 to infinity. It says each function, so I'm going to switch colors and do my original one as well. I'm going to only do this form. the original. Y is bigger than or equal to zero. So question two just added what happens when we do two translations, right? We always have, this J doesn't look very curvy, there we go. We always have inside the function moving left and right, outside the function moving up and down. Okay, and once again, if you wrote this as your answer here for the equation, and then you went and checked in the answer key of the textbook, and they wrote this. Can you see that those are the same? Right? So sometimes, oh, and as far as answer keys go, one thing that's really nice about this workbook, so we're going to flip anyways. First of all, write. 8, 9, and 10 above this question. Then flip to page 171, circle 8, circle 9, and flip to 172 and circle 10. 
But the nice thing about this textbook is you don't have to go, most textbooks you have to go to the very end to find the answers. The answers for these ones are always right away, right after the question. So the answers are all on page 176. So you don't have to flip too many pages. I think that's a nice design. Let's see the answers. 